change. The word alone can be challenging. How do we get started? Where will the change lead? Don't sit there and worry about it. Be the change. Welcome to Be the Change Radio. Host Christina Bloom has been a professional psychic and spiritual advisor for 20 years, offering psychic and mediumship readings for individuals and groups. She also teaches several classes in psychic development and metaphysics. In addition, she is an author who has published two books so far and is the co-owner of Moonbow Publications and Productions, LLC. Are you ready for that change now? Here is your host of Be The Change Radio, Christina Bloom. Good evening, everyone. It is, I am so happy to have you here with me. Welcome to Be The Change on WLTKDB Paranormal Talk Radio. My name is Christina Bloom, and I am your host. Do you love that new introduction? That is awesome. That is just an awesome introduction. I just love it. All right, before we get going tonight, we have a great show coming up tonight. It's We are talking to Frank Cordobano, who teaches meditation and breath work and is also a coach for men in early recovery from addiction. So he's, he's got a lot of really cool stuff going on. Uh, he's out of Richmond, Virginia, but he does a lot of stuff on Zoom. He'll be talking about that when he comes on. Uh, before we get there, though, we have some housekeeping. Just a reminder that the station, WLTKDB, will be on station break from December 20th through January 3rd. Um, we are going to be taking a break because, well, the producer needs a break. <laughs> he works really hard and he needs a break. So that's what we're going to do. And uh, also, oh, enjoy the time with our families and, and I hope that you enjoy the time with your loved ones as well. Uh, I do want to also let you know that uh, for, for the services that I provide, psychic readings, um, past life regressions, all that kind of stuff, I do have gift certificates available, and you can contact me through the contact form on my website at christinabloom.com. Uh, I, I will also be in Eau Claire, Wisconsin, February 19th for the Soul and Synergy Fair. And that will be at the Best Western on Mondovi Road in Eau Claire, Wisconsin. Uh, and last but not least, I don't know if you all remember Brian Kopik, for those of you who've seen the show before. But Brian and I are going to be doing a joint retreat together in northern Wisconsin at a beautiful lake house. And uh, just to just want to start putting that out there, let people know about it so that you can start planning for it. Um, the retreat is deeper awakening to eliminate limits. So we're both really excited about that. We got a lot of fun stuff planned for that. All right. So let's just, let's, I'm going to tell you a little bit, first of all, about Be The Change, because we have moved time slots from Tuesday mornings to Monday evenings. And some of you might have not seen the show before or heard the show before. So we just moved. And uh, a little bit about the show when I entertained the idea of doing a radio show, I wanted to do a show that accentuated the positive because there's so much negative going on in the world right now. And it seems like negative anyway. I know that it's a lot of shifting and ascending and, you know, to, you can't really uh, make an omelet unless you break a few eggs. So there's a lot of shifting and breaking and some negative feeling stuff going on. So I really wanted to accentuate the positive and really focus on that. And to do that, I have decided to bring on guests who we can talk with and who are doing positive things, who are making positive changes in the world and who are really stepping up and stepping out of their comfort zones, even in, in many cases, to make the world a better place for more people. And on that note, if you know anyone like that, let me know because I would love to have them on the show as a guest. All right. And speaking of guests, Frank, what a powerhouse of a guy. Um, he is, I was just talking to him a little while ago, and he's so excited about the work that he does. And he and I actually do very similar work, in, but in different arenas a little bit. Um, he's a, a coach for men in early recovery from addiction. 
Uh, I am not. <laughs> I have been a coach with um, women in addiction, uh, but not with men because that would not be appropriate. Um, he also works with all kinds of people teaching meditation, doing breath work, and helping people to really work through trauma. And that is also part of the work that I do is helping people work through trauma, but in a little bit different way. Um, I'm excited to have him on. But first, let's just talk a little bit about meditation, because I talk to so many people who say that they can't meditate. I really feel like that's more of an expectation of what people think meditation is. It's not just sitting in the lotus position for three hours until you can't think of anything anymore, which I think is kind of the idea that people have about meditation. But that isn't it. That isn't it at all. There, there is no expectation of complete mindlessness. There's no expectation that you're just going to not have any thoughts run through your mind. And maybe sitting isn't comfortable for you. So don't sit, walk. I do, I have my best meditations walking near water on the beach of one of the Great Lakes or walking through the woods, uh, sitting by a river. I have some of my best meditations doing that out in nature. I don't have to be sitting you know, on the floor in an uncomfortable position to do that. And when people really start understanding that there are different ways to meditate, that there's, you know, depending on the type of meditation that you want to do, you might have someone telling you that it's the wrong way. But overall, as long as you're doing it, you're doing it right. You know, there, there's really no wrong way to meditate as long as you are taking care of what you need to take care of and not trying to live up to someone else's expectations or what you think someone else's expectations are. Um, meditation has been really paramount for me in moving forward in my spiritual life, in my spirituality, in my life in general. Um, it has been paramount to me recovering from addiction and a number of other illnesses because our minds are so powerful and we can make ourselves as miserable or as happy as we want to be with the power of our own minds. And it's it's one of those things that is so important that once you grasp it, you start to understand manifestation, you start to understand how your own feelings work, you start to understand how your own mind works. When you're working with the power of your mind and meditation and focusing your energies, which is really what it's all about, is focusing energies, being able to relax enough to really figure out what you even want. All right, um, I'm going to take a really quick break here. I, it seems that we are having some technical issues with our guests getting into the show, and uh, I'm going to go take care of that, and I'll be right back. Looking to launch your new masterpiece? Then try something new with Moonbow Publishing and Production. At Moonbow, we have a strong desire to serve authors in a powerful and meaningful way. After all, you poured your heart and soul into your writing and we fully understand and respect that. Remember this. You will own the copyright to your work. You will have the final say on your work before being published. Even after all of that, we've saved the best for last. We won't take a percentage sold. Nope, not a penny. Excited about MoonbowPublications.com yet? We thought so. Take advantage of our company's services like book editing, formatting, and covers, publishing, and photography. Moonbow Publishing and Productions has everything you are looking for in a company. Remember, we will not keep any commissions. We are a boutique publishing company focusing on spiritual, health and wellness, and personal growth genres. Moonbow Publications and Productions, a new kind of publishing company.
Okay, we're back. We got it straightened out. Thank you. Um, again, we're, we're, we're going to be talking about meditation, breath work. Um, I haven't learned a lot of different breath work techniques. I know I've, I've worked for years and years and years on deep counting breath work, you know, like inhale for eight, hold for eight, exhale for eight. And then some other ones that uh, I think that Frank knows a whole lot more about it than I do. And um, he will be sharing those things when he comes in. The whole point of this show is to help you understand that there are so many ways that you can take care of your own mental and emotional health. And I'm not saying don't go get help if you need it. Please, please do. But these are some things that you can help support yourself with at home, with meditation, with breath work, particularly if you're recovering from something difficult like addiction or, you know, some sort of uh, an illness, another type of thing like cancer or whatever, where our bodies believe what we tell them. And when our bodies understand that we want it to be healthy, that we can recover from anything. I've come back from four near death experiences. And having done that every time I have learned something new about how to help my body recover from it. We've all had our trials in life. And when we can find tools that help us work with those trials, we can make our own personal lives better, which helps to make everything around us better. And that, that, pebble in the pond and the ripples that go out from there and all of that is really it's amazing stuff it is absolutely amazing stuff when you really get into it and i know that we have that we've had some people who listened in on tuesday mornings who might not be on the monday evening show who can back me up on that who are just wow my life just changed it just changed when i started meditating and when i started learning how to use my own breath to heal my own body. Um, we, I've, I've seen people recover from amazing things when they have done that. And um, I just lost my train of thought. I was doing so well, wasn't I? Isn't that amazing? I just totally lost my train of thought. Um, so I'm just sending caught a message here quick. All right. I am... Uh, I would like to also have you participate if you'd like to, you know, start sending in some chats and we can answer some questions for you or help you with any thing that you're, you're having, maybe struggling with a little bit with meditation and breath work. Um, hold on just a second here. All right, we're still having trouble getting Frank in here. And uh, I am going to see what I can do. Let's see. All right. We're just going to take another long break because we're having some difficulty with getting Frank in here. And uh, we'll be back. Thanks. Have you ever longed for just one holiday with a loved one who has passed? Christina Bloom can help you and your family have that holiday. With her mediumship skills, she can contact your loved one on the other side and bring them through as the honored guest for your holiday celebration. By a conference call, video chat, or in person, if local to the Southeast Wisconsin region. To schedule your holiday party with spirit, email Christina at ChristinaBloom.com. That's Christina at ChristinaBloom.com. Okay. I 
I'm laughing because for those of you who don't know me, technical issues just tend to follow me around. I it, It's crazy how many technical issues I've had, not just with this radio station, but with websites, with my Facebook page, with all kinds of stuff. I always seem to uh, get the, uh, the technical issues. All right. So Frank's browser is not supporting the system. So uh, I don't know that we're going to be able to get him in here tonight. So I'm just going to talk to you, I guess, about the breath work that I know how to do and the meditations that I know how to do. I started out writing meditations and doing meditations at a at a health club in in Wisconsin where uh, you know one night a week I was doing guided meditation classes and people would come to that and um, show up for that. Um, so we this is what this is where it started for me where I've written meditations for all kinds of different things. I haven't published all of them. Um, but I have published some. If you're interested in free meditations, there are some on my website. So uh, you can go to christinabloom.com. And I think it's under the tab store where you can find six free guided meditations. Uh, and we'll be doing a, a guided meditation at the end of this show too. It's getting in touch with ourselves and really getting past the fear of what we're going to find inside. When we first start meditating, many of us, not all of us, but many of us, when we first start meditating, we're so afraid of what we're going to find. We're so afraid that we are maybe so lost or so broken or so sad that we don't want to face those feelings. But when we do the meditations, when we learn how to sit with that and sit with ourselves, and be okay with ourselves. And believe me, it takes work getting there. This isn't something that, that happens automatically. But when we can do that, and we can just be comfortable within ourselves, it makes a huge difference. And along with meditation, a lot of people like to journal. And journaling can be great, particularly if you don't try to control what you're journaling and just let it come, just let it come out, let it come through. And with those that's another form of meditation, by the way, journaling. <laughs> and that's something that maybe people don't often think about, but you can journal meditate and just let whatever comes into your mind just, just flow through. I'm holding a pen and writing and you can't even see me do it, but that's okay. When, when you do that, any type of thing that helps release trauma, that helps you to feel what you feel is really healing whether it's learning how to do particular breath work, like the deep counting breath work, or uh, th there's one that I really like that is great for muscle relaxation, where you inhale for a count of four and you hold it for a count of seven, and then you exhale for a count of eight. So when, when the exhale is longer than the inhale, it really helps your muscles to relax. That is one that I really like to use when I'm teaching a class, say, on past life regression, and people really need to be able to relax to be able to get into the past life regression and be able to really accomplish whatever it is that they want to do in there. That's also something that I do as a guided meditation or a hypnosis is a, a past life regression to help people understand maybe some trauma that, that they can't relate to this lifetime or a habit or some sort of maybe an addiction that they can't relate to this lifetime. We can, we can use breath work and guided meditation to go into a deep trance-like state to find out maybe where those traumas started. And sometimes that's the only answer you need is to just know, okay, this is why I am the way I am. And now I can just let that go and I don't have to keep trying to fix it because it's not fixable. It happened way back when. And that can be so freeing and so, so, so powerful. There are just so many ways that we can heal ourselves when we can just heal ourselves with the love and the light that we can bring in from the universe by meditating. You know, And whether you have a religious belief or not, there are different ways that you can focus on 
how to do these things and how to um, how to move forward and leaving the past behind because we're here to grow. We're here to experience. We're here to try to understand how to do that. We're, we're here to experience love because in spirit form, when, when before we come into a body, we already know what perfect love is. What we don't know is how to experience it in an imperfect situation. And so we come into a body so that we can experience it in an imperfect situation. Um, so as, as I'm sorry, as I'm talking about this, we have a lot of stuff going on here. Um, as I'm talking about this, I'm realizing how many times over the course of my lifetime and over the course of my adulthood and even back into my childhood where I was able to even transcend the physical body using a type of meditation, transcendental meditation, to be able to get out of the situation that I was in that was hurting me. We can have incredible pain control using the power of our minds. Uh, when I was taking hypnosis classes, oh my gosh, we were showed a film where a woman went through a root canal under hypnosis with no anesthesia. You know, I've got a lot of faith. I don't have that much faith. I'll be honest. I do not have that much faith, <laughs> but I've seen it done and I know it can be done. You know, I've seen psychic surgeries performed where the body is actually cut open and they are actually performing surgeries and the people are doing it with no pain, but they have full recovery. Mm. Excuse me. Need to get my throat going there. Um, so meditation, recovery from addiction. There are so many different ways to recover from addiction. I know when I first uh, started recovering from addiction, 12 steps was it. And I know, and I'm not putting down the 12 steps. They're great, but there's many different ways because not one, there's no one thing that works for everyone and trauma-based recovery, healing the trauma is really, really a powerful way to heal just about anything. So there are so many different ways that we can do that and with meditation, with the power of our mind, with the power of the group, I know that when we do group meditations, even people who say that they have trouble meditating do a much better job of being able to meditate while they're in the group because they have the energy of the group supporting them. Um, I keep hitting blanks, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, there. Are, I would like to introduce you, I guess, to a couple of different types of meditation. And maybe we could do that tonight, considering we got a little bit derailed. Uh, if you are driving, please do not participate in these exercises. But if you are not driving and you are in a place where you can be relaxed and comfortable, just take a moment and sit back and close your eyes. And I'm going to talk you through the releasing your muscles breath work. So just take an inhale for four counts. So inhale, one, two, three, four, and hold for seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and slowly exhale for eight. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Now take a breath in between, just a comfortable breath, and repeat it. Inhale for four. One, two, three, four. Hold for seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And exhale for eight. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Do you feel a little bit more relaxed? 
I mean, I, I wasn't even doing the breathing with you because I was doing the counting, but as I was counting backwards from eight, I could feel my shoulders relaxing. I, I could just feel it. And the backwards counting, at least for me, has been very helpful because it's like, do, do, just bringing the energy down and relaxing. Another thing that you can do if you need to get your energy pumped up there's ways to do that with breath work too, where you can breathe more quickly and just <sighs> to be able to bring your energy up to oxygenate your blood. There are different ways that you can do breath work that I have learned um, from watching just like, like Neil, what was his Neil Donald Walsh. He had a, um, a 60 second meditation on like, I don't know, years ago, where it's um, inhale for five, hold for five, exhale for five, and do that for a minute consistently. And it super oxygenates your blood and it helps you get more pumped up. Now, unless you're working third shift, I don't suggest you do that now because you may be awake for hours and hours and hours. So um, just <laughs> keep that in mind. When we're going into a guided meditation, I often have people just breathe as deeply as they're comfortable and then slowly exhale in through the mouth, in through the nose, exhale through the mouth. And that can help you relax too. So just go ahead and do that for a minute and just And inhaling into your belly rather than into your chest will really help you to be able to relax and be able to focus more. Um, so uh, we will be able to, when you do that, and you're able to breathe into your belly and then just relax. You can just feel yourself winding down and that helps to slow your mind down too. That helps to slow your body and your mind down. And so we can, just by breathing, we can relax. Another thing that I like to do with people is breathing into your chakras when you need to open up your chakras. And if you don't know what chakras are, let me just do a quick rundown. And if you do, Sorry, just bear with us. So there are seven main chakras. The root chakra is at the base of your tailbone. And each chakra is associated with a color and a vibration. And I don't know like, all of the technical stuff. I don't know like which hurts the each chakra resonates with. Um, but the, the first one at the base of your tailbone is red. Okay, so what I like to do is have people breathe in as deep as they can and visualize that breath going all the way to their tailbone and feeling that chakra opening and expanding and, and starting to glow red. And then you exhale and then you move up to the sacral chakra, which is just above the pubic bone and the color is orange. So you want to blow, I'm sorry, breathe into the sacral chakra, activating that chakra and then releasing the breath gently. And then we move up to the solar plexus just above the area of your belly button. And you want to breathe into that with, through your nose. Activating that chakra, which is associated with the color yellow. And then ex slowly exhale through your mouth. And the next chakra is your heart chakra, obviously located in the center of your chest. And this, the color associated with that is both pink and green, pink for love, green for healing. So that's where you want to breathe into your chest actually is into the heart chakra. So you just take a breath in to activate the chakra and then slowly breathe out. The next chakra is in your throat. It's associated with the color blue. So you want to focus 
the breath that you're bringing into your throat. And it's a little bit harder to imagine the next three, the throat, the third eye and the crown, but you can still do it. So you want to breathe into the throat chakra to activate it and then release the breath. Now we're moving up to the third eye, which is located about here, just above and between your eyebrows. And the color for that one is indigo. So you want to breathe into the indigo chakra, into the third eye chakra to activate that one. So just breathe in through your nose, focusing the energy, even though it's going to your lungs, focusing the energy of the breath to the third eye, activating it and then releasing the breath. And finally, we get to the crown chakra, top of the head. And the color for that one is violet. So as you're breathing in, you want to imagine the, the breath going up to the top of your head to activate the crown chakra to expand it and have it glowing in violet. Activation and then release. And when you've done that, you've opened up the energy centers in your body for free flowing energy. And when you have free flowing energy, then you also have free flowing oxygen. The spirit and the body are very closely connected. One, one does not exist without the other. So the body does not exist without the spirit in it, without your soul in it. And the soul needs energy moving and the body needs energy moving for health, for oxygen, oxygen. Uh, that's a hard word to say, oxygenization, to keep that flowing through. So that's another breathing exercise that you can do when you have time is to breathe into each individual chakra. And just a, a quick rundown. So the root chakra has to do with earth life. It has to do with things like jobs, cars, homes, families, that sort of thing. The sacral chakra has to do with creation and being creative, creative energies, not just art, but creation of all kinds. So you have to move into that to help open up the creativity, to help you really spark where you want to go in life and where you're being led in life and to be able to do so in a creative way. The solar plexus is your power center. It's right in the middle of your body and it's your power center. It's where your self-esteem is. It's where your personal power is. So you really want to keep that activated as much as possible because when you when it's not activated, that's when you're feeling insecure. That's when you're afraid to make decisions. That's when your addictions might kick in. And we all are recovering from something, as Frank would say if he was here. We're all recovering from something. So when you're holding strong in your, in your solar plexus, that's where your power is. That's where your strength is. And, and if you think about it, when you drop your weight for some reason, um, I don't know, wrestling is coming to mind, and you really want to drop your weight, you drop it into your solar plexus. That's where your balance is. So you want to be able to keep that one. So moving up to your heart, your heart is both love and healing. And uh, love obviously seems obvious, at least in our culture in the United States or the Western world. But you want to be able to keep that as healthy as possible because it really is about heart and lungs and it's the breath of life. That's where the breath of life is, is in your heart chakra. And moving up to the throat chakra, that's all about communication. And when people have difficulty with, um, with standing in their power, with speaking their own truth, that's when people tend to have issues with thyroid because that's also located in the throat area. So you really want to be able to, to keep your communication chakra strong as well. So when you're breathing into all of these chakras and you're activating them, you know, you're, you're activating life on earth, you're activating creation, you're activating power, you're activating communication, you're activating love and healing. And then as we move up into the third eye, that's moving into the realm of intuition. And the third eye is something, it's where you it's where you connect with your intuition, where you, you connect with other people on an intuitive level. And then with the, the crown, that connects us to the universal life force. And so when you're breathing into all of the chakras, that brings you into that, where you are from 
the universe all the way down to the earth. You are open. Your energy is flowing. Uh, that's one of my favorite meditations to do, connecting into the earth and going out into the universe. Uh, you can find that one on my website, again, for free. Um, that's one of the, the better meditations, I think, is, is breathing into each chakra, keeping it going and keeping the energy flowing. That helps us to concentrate. That helps us to... Uh, oh, Robin, hi, you're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you. She said thank you for the breathing techniques. Um, we, their breath, if we don't have breath, we don't have life. I mean, it's really that simple. That's the way that these physical bodies are designed is that if we don't have breath, we don't have life. So learning how to captivate our breath and learning how to use it in a way that really enhances our lives and enhances um, the lives of those around us, because when we're healthy, we can help other people be healthy and happy because we can't pour from an empty cup. And so th there is, oh, <laughs> I needed to take a breath. I just really needed to take a breath. So breathing and meditation can go hand in hand because breathing can calm you down and meditation can help you concentrate. And also when, when you're doing breathing techniques, you are oxygenating your blood, which is getting blood flow to your brain so you can think better. So it's important to be able to do that. Another reason that for me personally, breath work is so important. Um, seven years ago, I had a really severe case of pneumonia and uh, they had to do a thoracotomy. So uh, that's, for those of you who don't know, that's a chest surgery and as you know, the chest area is all surrounded by rib cage to protect it. And so they had to cut through my rib cage and scrape my lungs. And it was a, just a really horrendous experience. But coming out of it to recover, I had to do breath work because if I don't do the deep breathing and still now, if I don't do the deep breathing, then the scar tissue could take over. Excuse me and prevent my lungs from working correctly. So for, for people like me who have had surgeries like that or who have um, lung diseases or something like that, breath work is so important because it keeps your lungs expandable. It keeps them uh, elastic, I guess is the word I'm looking for. So it, it's just really super important to be able to do that and to, to be able to stay healthy, to keep our bodies healthy to keep the blood flowing. Meditation helps the heart because again, it helps with oxygenating the blood. It helps with keeping it flowing. Meditation is important for the body and for the mind and for the spirit. And emotionally it's important because when your mind is calmer and your body feels stronger, you're mentally and emotionally more healthy and you're more spiritually healthy as well. Spiritual health is something, excuse me, See, I did all that breath work and now it's got me so relaxed. <laughs> Spiritual health is something I don't hear a lot of talk about. I hear a lot about emotional health and mental health. Very, very important. And spiritual health is very closely connected to that. Spiritual health is really the, it's the relationship that you have with yourself. It's the relationship that you have with the universe. It's the relationship that you have with whatever higher power that you believe in. Your spiritual health is paramount to the, all of the other health in your life. And, and even atheists have spiritual health because they have a connection with the universe in many cases. Oh, excuse me. I keep hearing a bing, but I'm not sure where it's coming from. So it, I'm looking at the camera and not at... at the screen. So if you message me and I miss it, I'm sorry. I will do my best to get to everything. All right. Um, I know we, we have about 20 minutes left, but we could do a couple of quick guided meditations if you'd like to. So again, if you're not driving and you're not cooking or whatever, and you can just sit back and close your eyes and we're going to do a healing meditation. It's a, it's a guided meditation for healing. So just sit back, relax, Close your eyes and start with the inhale for a count of four. One, two, three, four.
four, hold for seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, exhale for eight, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And because we've been already doing some of these, I'm not going to go through that of any more times during this meditation. So with your eyes closed, I want you to visualize an outline of your body standing in front of you. Just an outline of your body, like a silhouette standing in front of you. Now I want you to visualize that silhouette filled with light, except where your pain points are. Those will be dark. And in this meditation, because you're going to, because you have this outline of yourself standing in front of you, with your own hands, reach in and pull out those dark spots. Just pull them out and throw them off to cosmic recycling and let the light take over those spots. As many spots as you have, just keep reaching in and pulling out the dark pain spots and throwing them off to cosmic recycling to be turned into positive energy. And do that as many times as you need to, whether it's physical pain, emotional pain, mental pain, it doesn't matter. Just keep reaching in and pulling out the dark spots and throwing them, throwing them off to cosmic recycling. And I'm just going to sit here for a few moments while you do that and let you do that and then I will bring you back. And when you need to, take another deep breath just to cleanse out any debris that might still be hanging around. And when all of your dark spots have disappeared and the silhouette standing in front of you is filled completely with light, just gently open your eyes and breathe. Breathe easy, breathe normally. And Valerie, you're welcome. I saw you pop up on the screen over here. That is a really quick meditation that you can do when you're experiencing pain. Um, even if you just, let's say you have knee pain, it, you can just visualize the dark spot and just, you know, pull it out and toss it off to cosmic recycling. And then put your hands on your knees like this because our hands are very healing. The first thing that you do when you bump your knee anyway is to put your hands on it because there's healing energy coming from our hands. And then just go ahead and put that on where I, I'm using the knee as an example, but wherever it might hurt, just putting your hand on there. This is a really easy meditation that you can do for yourself anytime and it doesn't take a lot of time, even if you're at work, you know, if, if you're stand, you're sitting at your desk and you're feeling the tension in your in your shoulders and your neck and you can just sit back for a minute and just visualize reaching in and pulling that pain out and sending it off. It's very, very powerful to be able to do that. Um, if you have a job where you are not sitting and you're not able to do that with wherever you are, you know, next time that you go to the restroom, you can just take an extra minute and do that and get rid of the pain. It's a very simple thing to do but again our minds are so powerful that they it believes what we tell them it believes what we tell them so make sure that uh, you are telling yourself positive messages while you're doing this that it's free you're releasing it it's gone it's being recycled no more pain in the world you don't want to leave it lying around where you can pick it up again it's, uh, and I know that's a visual thing and I'm kind of a concrete thinker. So I have the visuals and if I don't throw it off to cosmic recycling, you know, I don't want to step in a pile of goo that I just pulled out of myself, <laughs> if that makes any sense to you at all. Um, you know, I think we're going to round it out with a little bit longer meditation tonight. So uh, we're going to create your safe space. So again, if you're not driving and you're or, or cooking or whatever and you're able to do this, just sit back and relax 
And I'm going to talk you into creating or talk you through creating kind of your own personal garden space that you can go to anytime that you want to. It doesn't have to be a garden. It can be whatever works for you. But um, I'm going to guide you into a space where you can create whatever safe space works for you. You're going to be using your imagination. So be prepared for that. So just sit back, relax, take a few deep but comfortable breaths. Letting your muscles relax as you exhale. Continuing to breathe deeply. And leaving your body is where it is to rest and rejuvenate. Imagine your soul getting up and walking down a beautiful staircase. And as you're walking down the staircase, you're going deeper into relaxation. Continue breathing gently as you're walking down the staircase. And as you're walking down this beautiful staircase, you're walking into a place that is created just for you by you. It can be a beautiful English garden. It can be a beach. It can be whatever you want it to be. The woods. Maybe you want to walk into a cabin in the woods. Whatever it is that works for you. You're down there in your own sacred space because you've gotten to the bottom of the stairs and the space can be as large or as small as you like. But with your imagination, you can just pop up flowers or trees, a stream, whatever it is. Just take a few moments and create your space, whatever it is that makes you happy. Remember to keep breathing. And now that you've created your space, or you're in the process of creating your space, name your space. What is this for you? As you're naming your space, what you're creating is a trigger word so that when you sit down to meditate or when you go to the beach or walk through the woods or whatever, you're naming your space and all you have to do is think of the name of your space and your mind will bring you back there immediately. It will bring you back right to where you are right now, calm, relaxed, happy. Just enjoy a few minutes there and know that this is where you can go when you want to talk to your ancestors your spirit guides, the deity of your choice. This is a sacred space set up for you, by you, that you can go anytime to do whatever you need to do to feel better for yourself. When you set your space and you're clear about it, you can picture it, you can feel it, you can smell it, you know every sound in there. You can feel the birds or and hear the birds. Maybe you have some animals there running around. Remember all of it. Just take a moment to remember it all. And when you're ready, walk back over to the staircase and begin slowly walking up the staircase, feeling peaceful, calm, centered, and balanced.
as you continue to walk up the staircase, you're coming back more into your regular life, more into your body, and you are reaching full consciousness. Welcome back. Simple meditations like these can change your entire life very, very quickly. I was amazed at how quickly my life improved when I started creating sacred spaces for myself, when I started having these images that I could just return to in my mind like that and be so much more calm and at peace. Uh, I think we're going to do one more. It's um, creating, it's, it's about pulling your energy in. Because what we don't realize is that our energy is big. <laughs> our energy is really, really big. In, in my classes and in my retreats, I show people how far their energy goes out from them. And everyone is absolutely astounded. It's usually at least 20 feet. And you're standing right in the middle of that. So if you're standing in the middle of your energy, like right here, and you're going and you have an energy field going 20 feet out from you in all directions, if you are even a little bit empathic, you are feeling every single thing around you. Everything. So think about if you're driving, have you ever been driving and all of a sudden you just realize you're just really angry and you don't even know why. It's probably because someone drove through your energy field and they were having a bad day, but you would have no idea of like where you got it from. All you know is that all of a sudden you're angry and you don't like it. You can prevent that by pulling your energy in. So what I want you to do is visualize or maybe even just stand up and imagine that you have a hula hoop floating around you. And as that hula hoop is floating around you, you're pulling your energy into it. Just breathe your energy into it. Just breathe it in. Visualize it coming in. And then just hold it there for a minute. And you can just feel yourself becoming more calm and more grounded because you're disconnecting from all of the chaos around you. It's a real simple technique for you to be able to feel strong centered and calm in your own space. And it just feels so good to be able to be grounded and calm and centered in your own space. In order to be really effective in the spiritual world, we need to be able to be effective in the physical world. But if we're floating around out there, it's really hard to be focused and centered here. So when you can bring that into here, it just feels really good. And I can tell you it's not going to stay there because energy is not static. It doesn't stay still. It moves. It's going to float around out there again. But if you just happen to be noticing that you're getting really tired and you don't know why, pull your energy in. Because somewhere out there, somebody is draining off of your energy. They're not meaning to. It's not intentional, and it's certainly not personal. But because it's there, they're soaking it up. So sometimes you just have to pull your energy in and just sit with it. And just go, oh, this feels good. I've disconnected. The other thing that that, that helps you to do is that when you are holding your energy close, like within two feet of yourself, probably a foot and a half, two feet of yourself, when you're holding it that close, Anyone who gets into your energy space has to be invited. They don't get to just wander into it, right? You're not going to let anyone that close unless they're invited. So keep that in mind too. And this will also help you be able to determine between what's your energy and what's other people's energy. We're not used to determining that because we're all so enmeshed. We're, we have not been taught from day one to be able to separate our energies out, to be able to pull our energy in and say, this is mine and that's yours. And it's good. It's good that way because people are more comfortable in their own energy. 
one more quick thing that you can do is after you've pulled your energy in, you can imagine it like a column or um, a globe, a ball, whatever, and you're inside of your own energy. And then you can, in your mind, with your imagination, coat the outside of it with something reflective. So when energy comes toward you, it just reflects back and you're not absorbing it. You're just in your own little thing. And this is another trigger thing where you can pull it in and you can imagine that and then think of a word that you, is not part of your daily vocabulary that's a trigger word. And the way trigger words work is when you think that word or you say that word, your mind automatically does what you tell it to do in association with that word. Okay, so for instance, I pull my energy in. I coat the whole thing in chrome because chrome is reflective. Chrome is, is, is reflective. It's like a mirror. You can also coat it with a mirror, whatever you want to do. But for me, it's chrome because my trigger word is trailer hitch. So if I'm in a situation where I'm surrounded by a lot of chaos, like, oh, I don't know, coals at Christmas time, <laughs> you know, there's a lot of chaos going on there. But if I just think the word trailer hitch, boom, I am in my space and everything is getting reflected away from me. And that way I can be calm, cool, and collected while I'm doing whatever I need to do. And all of the other busy shoppers are doing what they need to do, but I don't have to be affected by them and their anxiety or whatever else it is, their lists that they're going through in their heads, because we're all doing it anyway when we participate in any kind of a holiday like that. Well, I want to thank you all for sticking with me again through the technical issues, which seems to be a theme for this show. But I want to thank you for sticking with me. I want to thank you ladies who popped in and um, commented. And I want to thank Todd, my producer, for uh, getting me through this when we were having some trouble in the beginning. And uh, we will see you next week at 8 o'clock. Let me just, I have to check because I have no memory. All right, so next week we will, oh, we will be on with Diet Renee. So she has uh, School by Spirit here on Monday mornings on WLTKDB, and I've been on her show a couple of times. She's now going to be my guest, so I will see you next week with Diet Renee. Have a safe and loving week. Peace.